Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, I was asked if you can get deep in onto Linux Mint, and so I decided to investigate this a little bit and found that uh, indeed there is a PPA. Now, in my initial tests, we had some issues with it. So who knows what this is going to turn into. Uh, in my initial tests, what I, I had an issue where it kept on dropping up into, it was like you're constantly pressing you know, Alt F2, Alt F3 on your Linux box, we can drop to a terminal. And I kept on getting that general effect. And so I decided I'd go ahead and rerun my system. And what we did now, so I'm using Linux Mint 19.2. And what I didn't do was I didn't change any kernels. I didn't do any updates. And so we're actually going to go ahead and do that first. So uh, I actually have a Linux Mint build here that we're going to go into that I installed and then I ran this the updates and then I switched the kernel up to kernel 5 in case um, in case that happened to be the issue. So we're going to run through the installation as to how to put Deepin on this and we'll see if it works. I really can't guarantee if it's going to based on my initial tests that I did. So let's go ahead and uh, dive on over to the desktop view here. So we will go ahead and have a look at Linux Mint. And so uh, here we are on the virtual machine. Let me type in my super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. This should boot us full screen as I have installed the VirtualBox guest editions. Although I am still getting a notification uh, that um, something is still not running correctly, but we'll see what happens here. So you know, check your video drivers, but that's all right. So here we are. Uh, we are on Linux Mint 19.2. So this is the latest version of Linux Mint, and we are running the Cinnamon Edition. And as I said, I did come in here and I ran all of our security updates and I did our driver. I'm not sure why it's telling me I have more updates here. Okay, there's another update for the kernel. You'll notice I have not set up snapshots. I, I really, one of the issues I'm having with Linux Mint is like, please get rid of this thing. Please sit there and say, don't, don't ask me again because I've clicked through this thing several times. You know, Linux, it's so easy to restore the system. I'd rather just restore the system. I have a backup of my user data. Um, that's kind of the case, but it will not let you get past that stupid screen without getting rid of that stupid orange bar. It's actually frustrating. So Linux Mint team, get rid of that stupid orange bar. Give me the option to say, don't ask me again, because I don't want to use it. All right, so there we are. Now we have uh, we have this. Well, let's go ahead and probably not update or not reboot the system just because we're going to have to reboot the system after we do this. Now, what we're going to use here is one of the greatest features of Ubuntu is the PPAs. One of the worst features is the snaps. Oh, well, we're not here to talk about that. We're going to talk today about the PPAs. And the PPA is made by, is it, I don't know how to exactly pronounce this, L-E-A-E-Z. And uh, this is the one that did the uh, PPA. Let's see if that gets me that or not. There's a GitHub page. What we actually want is we want the launch pad. Let's just go ahead and type this in with Deepin. And let's see if we can get, um, okay, so here's uh, the GitHub page. But actually what I want is the launch pad. There it is. All right, so if you find the launch pad for Deepin, and uh, why is it I was not able to find the exact page I was looking for? I was just trying to trying to get uh, get us back to where we um, uh, where we wanted to be. There we are. So let's go back to his main page, launchpad.net uh, forward slash tilde l e a easy. And then he has two personal package archives. We want to go to the Deepin desktop environment. This is the Ubuntu PPA. Now, this here, this three lines here is your basic code to drop this into the terminal. It is possible to do this without the terminal, but in reality, it's so much easier to do the terminal. So let's cover real quick how would you do that without the terminal. You're too scared of terminals. If you just go into your software sources in Linux Mint, this is a tool provided by Ubuntu. And so this will work on Linux Mint. I am not sure this will work on uh, Linux Mint Debian Edition. Now come down here to PPAs and then you can add a PPA. And what we're gonna want is just from the PPA on over. So if we come on over here and hit add, just go ahead and do this and hit OK. It's gonna go ahead and add this. And then we just go into your package installer. 
update the system and then you will have the option there through usually through Synaptic Package Manager to go ahead and do that. But the reality is this is as good a time as any to learn how to uh, learn how to use the terminal and it's just so much easier to do this. Now a warning is that PPAs will have uh, they could have code in them that is unaudited or unauditable. So you want to use caution anytime you're using a PPA. Um, we're just going to go ahead and do this and hopefully he doesn't have anything super bad in here. So we're going to enter that, enter our password, and then we have to hit enter to continue adding the PPA. Or if we hold control C, that will cancel and not add the PPA. So you'll see that it's going in there and doing that. If we were to actually open up our software sources now, we should actually see that PPA listed. So now it is actually there. All right. So our next step is to do an update. So sudo apt, we don't need to use the dash get. Um, apt dash get was kind of the older method of doing that. So now what this is doing is this is going to update all of our package sources, which adds the package sources from our, uh, from our um, uh, new PPA installed. And now we're going to do a sudo apt install DDE. Now, one of the things that I found that this does not actually bring with it is it does not bring with it the themes. At least it did not when I ran my initial test, which to be uh, fair though, I was doing that through Synaptic just to test if you could actually do this without the terminal at all. And well, I think that yes, you can. Maybe the instability was because of that. Maybe it was because of the Maybe it was just the fact that I was doing it without the um, uh, uh, without the um, uh, system updates already installed. But uh, we did not get the deepened themes coming along with it. So we're actually going to boot up Synaptic when this is done. And then we were going to look and see if those themes are actually installed or not. So that's one of the things is that Deepin will be horrendously ugly if you do not have the Deepin themes with it. If you're trying to use Deepin with the Linux Mint themes, you will not have a good user experience. So uh, we're going to give this a minute to finish its, uh, its updating. You'll see it's installing some icon packs. It did install the icon packs, just not the themes. So we'll give this a few minutes and then we'll come back when it's done doing this. Okay, so now it's done. Let's just go ahead and uh, close out the terminal. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to boot up Synaptic and I'm going to see if those deepened themes have been installed or not. So if you boot up Synaptic Package Manager, we don't need that again. And we're going to search for DDE. We should actually see a bunch of DDE items installed, but not everything. That script does not actually install absolutely everything. There's things that it just doesn't install. Uh, mostly things that are related to just extra things like the DDE file manager. So the file manager is not installed by default. So, you know, you might want to install that file manager with it. All right. Uh, let's see. Qt platform theme integration plugins. See what this is going to do. All right. Go ahead and mark those. The trash plugin. This will give you the trash can on the dock. So if you want that, you're going to want to install that. Uh, you'll notice that it does not install the deep end movie, which is okay because we have a good one already built in with this. And I think the next thing I was looking for, I think it's actually called deep end dash GTK themes. Let's just do deep end. Let's see what we get when we search for deep end. All right. So here's a bunch of deep end things. So the calculator for deep end, the deb installer for deep end, which we won't actually need that. This is the one that does not install. The GTK theme for deep end does not get installed. So let's go ahead and install that. Again, deep end movie, mutter, deep end picker, which is the color picker, simple screen recorder, which actually kind of sucks in deep end. So that's kind of it. So um, let's see, deep in Windows Manager Monitoring and Auto Switching Service. Let's go ahead and install that too. Um, ooh, that actually wants to remove actual deep in. Let's cancel that. Let's not do that. <laughs> um, yeah, all right. 
So let's go ahead and hit apply. Um, we don't want to actually uninstall Deepin to get the Deepin window. What? This is why, like I said, this is not necessarily a highly recommended thing. It's just somebody asked me if you can do it. So I thought it'd be a fun stream to see if we can actually do that. All right, so now everything is there. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll actually do a full system reboot instead of just doing a, uh, just doing a log out. So let's go ahead and do that just because we changed that kernel as well. So we'll come over here and do a full system startup and we'll be back when this is done rebooting. So now we are installed, we are rebooted. We wanna come down, pull this guy down here and now we should have Deepin in our option. Let's enter in our super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. And let's, let's pray it works, let's pray it works. Like I said, I was having some issues before. All right, so here is the first run screen for Deepin. We want to do common mode or effect mode. Um, so the effect mode definitely for hardware. Since we're in a virtual machine, um, it might affect us. Let's just go into common mode just because I want to um, just make sure we can get things working since we're in a virtual machine. And now go ahead and hit enter. And we are now should be booting up Deepin, and there were some issues that I was having with Deepin. Uh, so I don't know if we're going to continue to have those issues or not. So over here, it does look like these are actually popping up and giving me the um, uh, giving me the tool tips. That's something that I was not getting before. Uh, there's our network. Let's see, pull this guy open here. Let's go with a uh, file manager. Let's just, uh, so it looks like Deepin File Manager is here. So it does actually appear as though the theming is set to Deepin. This is something that if you did not install that GTK theme, it did not actually work. The other problem is I could boot up the settings, but I could not make them go away. And that's what we're getting. If I click the desktop, our settings should go away. So we are definitely having a few issues with this. Let's go ahead down here. Of course, don't try your Mint themes. They will not work well. Um, so I found to get rid of that in this, we have to actually have to click on our um, desktop there to, to do that. Let's go ahead and boot up the file manager. You'll notice that it's despite me saying, Hey, we're going to use the dark theme. We're definitely not using a dark theme here. Um, unless there's an apply button that I forgot I need to push, but I don't think there is. So let's go ahead and it did pull all of our, all of our icon packs with us. But again, what you're, what we're noticing is we're not actually seeing those show up. Um, maybe it's just an issue that we need to reboot the system. So let's go ahead and, uh, give it a try. So let's reboot the system. Um, let's go ahead and do another full reboot rather than just log out, log back in. Let's just. Give this as many chances as we can. All right, so here we are after our reboot. Let's log back in. Let's see if we actually have our dark theme here or not. And see how this thing works and behaves. Like I said, the only, you know, our theming system wasn't working too well there, like our settings system wasn't working. Well, let's go ahead and give it a try here. Let's go with our Deepin File Manager. Nah, we still have this lighter theme going with us, but hey, at least it actually is functional, which it was not functional before. Notice that it did not actually change our desktop icons, so something is not working right within our desktop icons. Let's go ahead and look at our modes here. Let's go with the small size. Pull our launcher in. All right, so here's a little bit more of a launching system. Let's go ahead and launch the Firefox web browser. This is something that was not working well. There we are, now we're back to this. So it's like we just clicked the like Alt F2 or something. Sometimes I could recover from this by going there, but I could never get back to this screen. I just at this point in time, the system is pretty much dead. So let's do, uh, let's log in. So we are here. If we try and do like a start X, it just kind of gives us an error and then it's terminated with error. So there's something in this deepen, um, deepen system here that is kind of messing things up. One thing I could do is I could try fixing it, fixing it the way we did with it. Was it PC Linux OS or was it the other one where we could just completely kill the 
XOR config file and allow it to reset itself. That might be something, but I don't know for sure. So at this point in time, I was just kind of hitting the reboot. Oh man, I gotta do pseudo reboot though, don't I? And so now that's kind of where we got to. So yeah, you can install Deepin on Linux Mint, but it seems to not actually work. Now this was Linux Mint Cinnamon. It might be worth trying it on Mate or XFCE to see if it's something in there that's doing it. Other than that, I don't have any specific uh, indication as to what the problem could be. Um, maybe it's just something wrong with the, with the PPA, maybe, you know, whatever else. But we can get to the nice spot where we see this. And of course, every time I was rebooting from this, Deepin was not loading back into um, full screen mode. But that might be resolved by installing the... Uh, by installing the... Um, virtual machine guest editions, which I think that was. So we can kind of get to our nice desktop. Um, we do not have desktop icons. I, well, let me test if we can actually put desktop icons on or not. Let's go ahead and do a new, okay, so we can't actually put desktop icons. So it looks like the theming does not work super well. We can't get rid of this guy here without pulling up a menu. Um, but otherwise, let's see. So here's our theming. So it is deep and dark. Um, it seems to be only displaying deep and light, but it is deep, deep and dark. It's not resetting the icons. Let me go down to Yeah, and now we're back to this again. So yeah, we have an instability. So running Linux Mint with Deepin, at least in this general configuration, does not appear to be working. Um, is it worth fixing this? Uh, I don't know. Um, quite honestly, if I wanted to run Deepin, uh, what I would end up doing is... Um, Shut done, no, not shut done, shut down, thank you. What I would end up doing is I would end up just going back and um, running something like Manjaro Deepin or just something else that already has Deepin or, or Arch or you know one of the many other Linux distributions. Really the, the difference between a lot of different Linux distributions, there's not a ton of change um, I don't also don't know if this would work well with Ubuntu or not, if you really wanted to run it. You know, Ubuntu is pretty close to Mint in many ways, so you might try it with that. Um, I don't know. But anyway, uh, Linux Mint, in theory, you can put Deepin on it in my current environment. Now, this could also be the fact that my VirtualBox is getting old at this point. Um, it could be the Linux Mint Cinnamon, maybe the Mate and the XFCE will work. I didn't test those circumstances. I did test the, the um, natural kernel, which was, I think, 4.15, and this was running kernel 5. So it's probably not likely the kernel causing the issue. And another thing that I, that I did not mention as well, let's see, something did come to my mind, but I'm, uh, I'm losing it now. Um, but anyway, that was Linux Mint. Oh, that's right. Uh, even if you are not running Deepin, once you get that installed and you start getting that screen where it kind of gets you back to that login screen, then uh, going back to, even going back to Cinnamon will cause the same thing to happen. So it kind of breaks the whole system. Um, so, hey, there's our test. Um, if you want to figure out what's wrong with that, let us know. If you want to test one of the other conditions I didn't test, that'd be awesome to have an update in the comments to see. But as far as it goes, goes from here, I don't specifically see a big reason I want to invest more time in it personally trying to get it to run. But uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.